Today I want to teach you how to upgrade your iFlight ProTech 35 analog with a HD DTX. This could either be a Polar or a Vista, but not the original DJI Air unit as it's just too big and won't fit. We need a hack set H1.5 or a screwdriver, maybe some tweezers because it's easier to work with, a prop tool to remove the props and be able to remove the ducts as well. Metal spudger is always good for the, the plugs on the AIO, a working Vista Polar kit, and make sure you got four M1.6 20 mm screws as well as a wire harness kit if you're not into soldering. Our first step will be removing the antenna and the four props with the prop tool. The top plate can be removed with six screws, two in the front, two in the center and two in the back. Go ahead and remove the two screws, one each side holding the camera in place. If you have one of these adapters installed or in any other kind, make sure you keep them. The frame is made for a 20mm cam, which the original DJI camera has. And uh, new Polar kits or Vista kits uh, have only 18 or 19mm width, so we need an adapter. There's another 6 screws on the bottom. Remove those and you can take off the ducts. I went ahead and also cleaned my quad a little bit as it was a little bit dirty, full of grass, so I took some alcohol water mix and brushed it off. Our next step will be removing the four screws holding the analog VTX and AOFC in place. There's four nuts, M2 nuts on the top. Unplug the VTX. That's the original iFlight VTX and uh, micro size. Plug off the RX plug from the AO FC. We're gonna need this plug later. That's why we wanna remove the plug from the RX itself because we gotta do some work on the wiring. If you're absolutely unable to desolder the virus, from the analog VTX, just cut them off, but the better way would always be desolder those wires and uh, I'm just demonstrating here what wires I took off. There's one side with the VTX and the analog VTX, there should be three wires, one positive red, one negative black and one signal wire yellow. And on the other side, we got the camera wires as well, positive red, negative black, and signal or video in would be yellow. To make it all clean again, I removed all the wires and uh, we'll add some new solder. As I mentioned before, if you're unable to solder or unable to desolder those wires, just make sure you cut them off in a clean way. I would actually recommend taking those wires and especially the plugs off because those could knock or hit on the flight controller, which can cause some vibration or even weird flight performance and hot motors. 
So the best way would be to desolder them or if not possible just cut them off. In my case here I'm using my solder iron with a small solder tip and adding some new solder to just give it a clean look and make sure nothing's gonna short out in the future. First step I need to do here is go on the iFlight Google Drive and confirm my flight controller. There's several versions with the Protect 35. I'm working here on the Beast AO F7 and confirming the pinout on the plug. Because what I'm trying to do here is to make it easy, I'm using the original RXSR cable that was plugged in the FC before, but I want to install the HDVTX which needs additional wires and therefore I gotta remove some wires from that harness and reinstall my original RX uh, wire harness from the FreeSky RXSR that was installed in the back. If you're working with a TBS Crossfire receiver or uh, ExpressRS for example this won't work because this wire harness has only one input for an S-Bus wire and uh, Crossfire or ExpressRS as you need to install a TX and an RX wire and therefore needs to be soldered on. To install the Vista or Polar, there's no other way than soldering on those wires. What I'm doing here is just pre-tinning those pads. We need four wires, uh, plus, minus, or positive, negative, and TX, RX, going straight into the just prepared wire harness with the RX. I also have to pre-tin that wire harness now. Those are the four wires I was just mentioning. If you're not familiar with the pinout of the Vista, just follow what I'm doing here. I'm starting from the right with red, then black, then white, and then gray. If you're not sure about the pinout, please go ahead and check the iFlight uh, Google Drive again and confirm your pinout. The original standoffs, the rubber standoffs used for the analog VTX are a little bit too short to install the Vista on top. So either you add an O-ring or add some distance additionally, or as I'm doing here, uh, removing the rubber standoffs, they're just free. And um, using new O-rings and new screws for the installation of my Vista. And as mentioned before in the intro, we have to change the M2 screws to M1.6 screws as we screw uh, directly into the Vista. The best approach here is removing one by one. So you don't need to take off the FC at all. You just take out the M2 screws, stick back in the M1.6 screws and you're basically done.
I got 12 small o-rings here that I'm about to install on each screw. I'm using three on each screw, which is just about the right amount of uh, gap between SC and Lisa. As I said before, I removed those wires, desoldered them and cleaned up the whole solder pads because I, I wanted to make it as clean as possible. Those two wires belong to the RX in the back, one positive 5 volt and a negative GMD. So I gotta solder them back on. And here we got the final result. That's how it's supposed to look like um, when we can start to install the HDBTX. Our VTX is prepared. I need to unscrew the four bottom screws because that's where our long 20 millimeter screws from the frame go into. I also need to remove the top screw right next to the IPX plug for the antenna. And there's some small little metal piece that keeps the IPX plug in place. Make sure you don't lose it, otherwise your IPX uh, cable to the antenna might pop off. Just give those wires a little twist, put it under the VTX and plug it into the AIO plug. Now I can tighten the screws on the bottom one by one. Don't over tighten them and make sure you leave out the back screw for now. We need to tighten that screw later. The reason is our top screw is not installed holding the uh, that metal bracket um, pushing the IPX plug in that that screw is not in place yet so the bottom the long bottom screw will just go through and uh, just remember first install the IPX install that metal piece keeping it secured make sure the IPX connector goes out straight cable is straight not bent don't damage that cable it's very important and then afterwards tighten the bottom screw One very important point is connectors. Our Protec 35 analog has an SMA pigtail, which we need to replace with an RP SMA pigtail standard. Those DJI antennas, the stock antennas, as well as most aftermarket LHCP or left hand polarized antennas come in RP SMA. That means there's no center pin in your antenna connector. You can buy those pigtails on our website or your local dealer. If you don't want to replace the pigtail but use an SMA antenna standard, just make sure you match the goggle antenna polarization and that would be LHCP left hand polarized. When that's done, go ahead and give your VTX a little press, make sure it's damped properly and nothing is stuck in between. 
so we won't have any issues with vibration on the FC. Then plug in the prepared RX plug back in, in my case, the FreeSky RTSR receiver and put it back into your TPU. I also realized that the RX antennas, especially the antenna ends, were installed very poorly. That's why I used the original antenna protectors and pushed it in the TPU. Made sure that the antenna ends are straight because that has an impact on the signal. The last step would be assembling the quad bag again. Therefore, I just laid out my camera and make sure that it's not upside down. I'm checking the wire lengths. It's, everything is uh, at the proper length and not on tension, as well as the antenna cable in the back. I would then go ahead and install one center screw for the first side of my duct. Then install the back screw with my TPU. I would also confirm if my camera screws on the front have the correct length. As I mentioned before, we have one side with an adapter, a TPU adapter. Please confirm on your build if that's like there. And uh, I would screw the camera first in on one side. Then go ahead and install the second center screw of the duct holding it in place as well as the back TPU screw. Last step would be the front TPU two screws as well. And then we gotta take out our adapter for the camera in the front again. As mentioned at the beginning, the original DJI cam has a width of 20 millimeters. The frame is for that camera as well as for smaller cameras. It's comparable to all DJI cameras or analog cameras, but for smaller cameras, we have to use the adapter. As I show you here, that will be the original DJI cam. The last step for us here, same but backward, screwing in the two center screws, two screws in the front and two screws in the back to secure the top plate. As mentioned before already, the DJI goggle standard is LHCB or left hand polarized. We have to match that, that means on our ProTech, we also have to install LHCP antennas. Make sure your connector type is correct and matching. Our last step would be adapting the settings in our Betaflight configurator. 
to check my settings here, you need to activate MSP and the RX input for our RXSR receiver. If you use a different receiver, please check out our wiring diagram again or copy paste our factory diff from the Google Drive as well. 